Good morning, everyone. My name is Jay, Business Development Manager for Synthetic Biology and Biopharma. And I'm delighted to welcome you all to the TWIST webinar, TWIST Bioscience High Throughput Antibody Expression Service. In this webinar, you will learn how TWIST can support your antibody development work. Before introducing our speakers, just a few housekeeping items. All lines will be muted during the webinar. We will answer all questions at the end of the presentation. If you have a question, please submit in the Q&A box found at the bottom of the screen. Following the presentation, if you could please take one minute to do a brief survey, we would really appreciate your feedback. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce today's guest speakers. Our first speaker is Bernd Willems. Bernd studied biology at the University of Cologne in Germany and went on to do his PhD at the National University in Singapore doing developmental genetics research in zebrafish. He started his corporate career, career coordinating clinical trials at a German hospital consortium and later worked as a global product manager for Kyogen's PCR portfolio. He then turned to Singapore to represent the German biotech startup EOXA in APAC and eventually joined TWIST, where he is now working as the application specialist for our synthetic biology portfolio, comprising genes, oligopools, and DNA variant libraries. Our second speaker for today is Zhen Han. Zhen Han received his PhD in pharmaceutical and biomedical sciences from University of Georgia where he discovered and characterized novel activity of lysing acetyltransferases with biochemical, biophysical assays, and activity-based proteomic profiling approaches. After graduate school, Jen performed his postdoctoral studies at Scripps Research, focusing on gut microbiome categorization with functional catabolic probes and structural analysis of anti-malarial antibodies. Jen is currently a staff scientist at Twist Biopharma, and his interests are protein sciences and antibody drug discovery. Without further ado, let, let us welcome Bernd to start his presentation. Bernd, please. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jay, for the kind introduction. I would like to sincerely welcome each of our participants to this webinar. And here's a quick overview over our agenda. I will first talk a bit about Twist Bioscience and provide a wider introduction to our technology and product portfolio in the context of antibody development. And then introduce you to our new high throughput immunoglobulin G expression service. Subsequently, my colleague Jen will take over and present several use cases of the service and show how it was put to good use to support the therapeutic development projects of our biopharma team. To start off, I would like to show you a particularly exciting screenshot from our website. Because just like all scientists, we at TWIST love to brag about our publication record, which as of now stands at over 1,700 publications. Considering that we're still a very young company, we only started commercial activities in 2016, we regard this number as quite substantial and we're all very proud of it. With an increase of some 75% just in 2021 alone, these numbers also visualize the steep trajectory at which we have been growing our footprint in the global scientific community. And it is also testament to the fact that we do something very right. And here is what we're doing right. This is one of the most important slides I'm showing you today, as it shows the core technology of TWIST DNA manufacturing, our TWIST silicon platform. As all DNA synthesis methods, like the low throughput solutions in 96 well format shown on the left, our DNA synthesis is still based on the very well established 30 year old phosphoamidide chemistry. However, in contrast to the other platforms, our engineers were able to place more than 1 million spots of oligonucleotide synthesis on each of these wafers. This degree of miniaturization enables the game-changing scale of DNA synthesis throughput. And we're not just changing the game with respect to throughput. 
by ensuring significant improvements in coupling efficiency, twist DNA oligos are also characterized by an industry leading quality in terms of first 100% oligo representation or basically zero dropouts. Second, very high uniformity. Over 90% of oligos in a given pool or production batch are represented within a narrow bandwidth of not more than 2.5x from the mean yield. And third, an industry-leading low error rate of only one mismatch on average per 2,000 nucleotides. Using these oligos as the starting building material for all of the products in our portfolio ensures highest possible quality. And here is an overview over our portfolio of products and services. The oligos fresh from the waiver ship as oligo pools, of course, after a thorough quality control to support high throughput applications such as genome wide CRISPR screening or massively parallel reporter assays. They're also used to assemble our gene fragments and clonal genes. They're also being used to build very complex DNA variant libraries with a complexity of up to 10 billion variants used, for example, in phage display based panning assays to discover new therapeutic antibodies. Our biopharma vertical is leveraging on the superior quality of these libraries, offering full service solutions towards therapeutic development for the pharmaceutical industry. The oligos are also being modified to serve as probes for our comprehensive NGS portfolio. And we're also venturing into more exotic new business areas, such as DNA-based data storage. As an example, we have been working with Netflix to store entire TV show episodes in HD format in DNA and replay them by sequencing. Although this is not really related to the topic of today, it showcases what cool things you can do with virtually unlimited amount of highest quality DNA at hand. And of course, the antibody expression service we are going to talk about today is also, albeit indirectly, based on our oligo pools. With the products we're making and with the expertise we have assembled in-house, Twist is the prime address to approach for support for antibody development. We can help you in a variety of ways. Most of the products you were just introduced to support applications for one of the several steps along the lengthy way of developing a new therapeutic antibody, here shown as the line of arrows in the middle starting with target discovery and validations to find out um, what a receptor or other cellular component to target in the first place, our oligo pools are very useful for CRISPR screen-based target discovery. The validation of these targets is then often done with cell-based assays for which our clonal genes can be very useful. A very efficient way to discovering binders to a new target is by phage display based panning of large antibody variant libraries. Our combinatorial variant libraries, or short CVLs, are a groundbreaking improvement over conventional NNK or trim libraries by offering significantly higher quality as well as more sophisticated design options. If you would like to learn more about these libraries, check out uh, one of our CVL specific webinars or the information you can find on our website. Or just reach out to us directly and we will be happy to discuss your project and how we can help you directly. The next step in the workflow is the antibody optimization part. Taking a first lead through optimizing, also called affinity maturation, usually results in candidates with significantly improved binding affinities, specificity, or any characteristic you would like to optimize for. Here, a special format of our CVLs, the so-called precision CVLs, are very high utility. They are designed to, uh, to and built to interrogate a more targeted variant space of close relatives around a given antibody that do not differ by more than three codon substitutions away from its parent sequence. Library-based high-throughput screening campaigns are usually done in more compact antibody formats such as FABs, SCFVs, or VHHs. Once 
a manageable number of candidate binders is identified, they are usually reformatted to full-size IgGs for a more detailed downstream characterization by surface plasma resonance, short SPR, or any other analysis, analysis tools. Here, our clonal genes are being used to generate a template DNA to, um, to be transfected into mammalian cells, such as HEC293 or CHO, to express the full immunoglobulins. Now, to complement our offering and catering to the entire development workflow, we have now launched these two steps in one product, the high-throughput IgG expression service. You send us the sequence information, we deliver the antibodies, thousands of them, if you like. For the rest of this webinar, I will introduce you to this product in more detail. However, before I get there, I would like to introduce you to the services of our biopharma vertical. This group comprises of industry-leading expertise in antibody engineering and offers full-service solutions to both antibody discovery as well as optimization projects. They are an outsourcing partner mainly for pharmaceutical companies who wish to receive optimal antibody against a virtually any target molecule. The more difficult, the better. With an unlimited access to highest quality synthetic DNA, they have been building an ever-increasing collection of sophisticated discovery libraries, which are also available for out-licensing. The Twist Antibody Optimization, or short TAU platforms, is meant for optimization and or humanization projects for any lead antibody. If you would like to learn more about Twist Biopharma Services, check out one of the many webinars, most of them given by our CTO, Aaron Sato, or just reach out to us directly. Okay, so now that you know about the full bandwidth of Twist offerings in the field of antibody engineering, let us talk IgG. Again, a lot of what happens is in high throughput setting. Remember, we can print over 1 million oligonucleotides simultaneously. This is sufficient to assemble up to 10,000 genes coding for heavy and light chains, which accordingly is enough to express more than 5,000 immunoglobulins. This enables high volume antibody screening to accelerate and increase lead discovery success. With this capacity, we can cater to the ever increasing industry demand and are a true enabler for ever more complex antibody screening projects. So let Twist relieve your bottleneck of antibody production. We are that one-stop shop for precision. With a sequence in and antibody out concept, Twist handles everything from synthesis and cloning to expression and purification. We offer high quality antibodies produced from clone perfect NGS sequence verified DNA. Needless to say, there is a lot of potential for cost savings here when outsourcing IgG expression. There is no more need any, uh, to spend heavily on neither equipment nor consumables nor manpower to run your own IgG expression facility. Twist is already well known for its industry leading low pricing for gene synthesis and cloning. And this in turn means lower cost per antibody. We offer flexible options in terms of twist expression vectors carrying heavy and light chain uh, frameworks from a variety of IgG subclasses. And we also offer a range of product scales and buffers. Our best in class service includes liability screening and codon optimization options to improve expression potential. We keep you up to date about the production status on your e-commerce account. Here's a bit more detail about the services. The deliverables are purified antibody shipped on dry ice. And in addition, you will receive the plasma DNA already transformed into E. coli as glycerol stocks. We're using HEC 293 cells with a transient expression system. We follow a stringent QC process and include a highly reproducible positive control in every production batch. The quality control includes a digital STS gel to assess percent purity and yield, 
and the concentration is measured by photospectrometry. Talking about product specifications, you can choose among several antibody types. We can offer expression vectors carrying FC regions to make full-length antibody, um, I, for example, human IgG1, IgG2, and IgG4. Or if you like to do single domain antibodies, uh, we can offer the VHHFC format. In case you would like us to make other types of antibodies, for example, mouse IgGs, we can also accommodate that by custom onboarding your expression vector carrying the respective framework. Yieldwise, we offer two formats, the one milliliter and the eight milliliter. The average yields here are 15 to 200 microgram for the one milliliter format and 15 to 2000 microgram for the eight milliliter format. Both formats can be ordered either as supernatant or as purified antibody. As mentioned, with every production run, we include several positive controls. The passing of yield thresholds of these positive controls will determine the success of the given production run. These thresholds are 100 microgram for the one milliliter format and the 1000 microgram for the eight milliliter format. The usual turnaround times are 22 to 32 business days for supernatant or 25 to 35 business days for purified IgGs. We offer two options for the delivery buffer formulation, either a glycin tris hcl buffer or a citrate HEPIS buffer, both at pH 6. Let us know if you would like to receive the IgGs in yet another buffer. In this case, we can also offer a buffer exchange. This slide illustrates the workflow, how we make antibodies from the synthesized and cloned sequences onwards. Remember that all these steps are performed at a high throughput in a highly automated robotic lab. First, the two plasmids, one for the heavy chain and one for the light chain, are being co-transfected into cultured HEC293 cells. These cells are then incubated for around four days to allow the cells to produce sufficient amounts of IgGs. After incubation, the cell culture is spun down and then the supernatant containing the antibodies is purified over a protein AG resin column. Antibodies will bind to the resin and uh, all other proteins and cellular debris will be washed out. Finally, the antibodies are eluted off the column to enter the quality control lab. Reproducibility is one of the most important factors for running a successful high-throughput protein expression lab. We monitor this with our highly reproducible control IgGs. They facilitate a consistent safety net used to assure the success of all steps, a transfection, expression, and purification. This benchmark control allows for both validated expression yields and sample-to-sample -sample consistency. The data points on the graph represent individual yield measurements from all consecutive production runs over a given time point. The gray bars show the 90th percentile distribution. Note that almost all data points are above the cutoff threshold of 1,000 microgram for the 8 milliliter format and 100 microgram for the 1 milliliter format, respectively. This indicates the high degree of reproducibility achieved in our production lab. As mentioned, we use digital STS gel electrophoresis to confirm the correct expression of all antibodies that come out of our production pipeline. With the assessment of fragment size, um, approximate molecular weight, and person purity for both heavy and light chains, we make sure the antibodies are completely assembled. The two images show different visualizations of the same STS result for an example IgG. The bands represent the heavy and light chain, and the peak values indicate accurate size and purity. Finally, a word about our expression vectors. As mentioned earlier, we provide a selection of expression vectors carrying the constant regions of heavy and light chains. In particular, the heavy and light chains of human IgG1, IgG2, and IgG4 are available as well as the kappa and lambda light chains. 
for those who are interested in the expression of single domain antibodies, we are offering the framework for VHHFC derived from IgG12 heavy chains. In case you would like to express yet another antibody subclass, you can custom onboard your own vector with us carrying the respective framework. Alternatively, you can also get your full length IgG heavy and light chain genes, including the FC and FV domains synthesized by us and cloned into the blank expression vector. All our expression vectors uh, drive expression through a CMV promoter and enhancer system. Additionally, the beta globin intron as well as the WPRE help to further boost transgene expression. Twist, COSAC, and leader sequence are used to optimally uh, are used for optimal antibody expression and secretion with twist vectors. Just as with most of our products, ordering antibodies from us is easy and straightforward. Once you have signed up to our e-commerce portal, you can start ordering by clicking the antibodies icon on the main menu. The next step will be to select the type of antibody to order either a single domain or an IgG antibody from there on you can upload your heavy and light chain variable region coding sequence and select the format and some other options and you can submit your order. Some 30 to 35 days later, you will get your antibodies delivered on dry ice to your lab. Please let us know if you would like to receive any assistance with your ordering process. We are here to help. So are you ready to experience easy antibody expression? Reach out to us for more information and we look forward to start a discussion with you via Zoom call or a visit to your lab. This concludes the first part of the webinar. My colleague Jen will now take over and tell you about his first-hand experience with our antibody expression service in the context of some exciting biopharma development projects. Thank you very much for your attention thus far and I will be back to take uh, your questions during the Q&A with Sen after his part. Thanks. The floor is yours, Sen. Cool. Um, thank you, Brent. And also thank you, Jay, for the kind introduction. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Chen Hain. Uh, I am a staff scientist in the protein sciences and cell biology team at Twist Biopharma. Uh, I'm very happy to be here today to share with you our recent efforts to discover um, antibody therapeutics against different targets and show you how high through IgG made this process is faster and easier for us. So before uh, the key studies, I'd like to briefly introduce you to Twist Pharma, who we are. So Twist Pharma, as Bernard mentioned, is currently a division of Twist Bioscience uh, led by Dr. Aaron Suttle, who is also the CSO of Twist Bioscience. So at this moment, we're very specialized in these two early stages of this antibody drug development cycle, which is to use our library of libraries uh, to help our customers, collaborators, collaborators, as well as ourselves to discover antibodies, as well as optimizing existing antibody using our Tau platform, which I will not talk about today. Um, so in addition to uh, this workflow, I will also show you some exciting data we have been collecting with our collaborators in terms of how we do some pre-development um, drug development work. So our antibody discovery process starts from the library of libraries. Uh, as most of you know, Twist Bioscience is really good at making DNA, uh, which actually give us the privilege to make fully synthetic library with high quality, with broad sequence of coverage in a short period of time. So taking this domain of each antibody as an example, uh, we can make DNA oligopoles for each of the CDR, uh, CDR domains. We can easily make thousands of different oligos for each of the CDR domains. And then we can combine torically stage them together with the frameworks in between to get above 10 to 12 theoretical diversity. So not only can we make these libraries with great sequence diversity faster, um, but also we can precisely control the sequences we would like to put into the uh, libraries because every single oligopoles are actually synthesized by our design. So by doing this, uh, we will be able to uh, avoid avoid many developability issues of the antibodies produced from our libraries, such as immunogenicity, hydrophobicity, or protein aggregation, et cetera. 
So furthermore, we can also easily alter the length of the CDRs. Uh, we can also take away some unwanted motifs or build in some motifs uh, into our library based on the target we work on. So for example, we currently have uh, 18 different libraries sitting in our freezer that are ready to be put out doing panning um, instantly. So some of these libraries are actually designed specifically to some very difficult to target drug targets, such as GPCR proteins, ion channels, as well as carbohydrates. So if you're interested in learning more about our library of libraries, uh, we're very happy to discuss with you offline. So our libraries are designed for phage display, uh, which we can do panning against different types of targets, including recombinant proteins, uh, peptides, or using cells that overexpress in certain protein targets. So we normally do three to five rounds of panning, and then we use uh, NGS analysis uh, to check the sequence information from the panning. Alternatively, we can also do phage ELISA and then use Sanger sequence analysis as a readout. So after the sequencing information is collected, we will reformat uh, the, the verbal fragment of the antibody into a full-length IgG antibody or a single domain antibody with FC domains. And then the DNA uh, sequencing information will be submitted to MES, uh, as per mentioned, and then the twist DNA synthesis team will make this DNA uh, and then pass them down to high throughput IgG. So high throughput IgG usually do um, one mil or eight mil transfection using XP293 cells per our request. And then after the proteins were purified with the automatic high throughput uh, purification method using protein A column and check for quality as well as protein concentration, they will be passed down to us to do some further studies. So from a typical uh, fit display panel, we can sometimes we can get hundreds of antibody candidates. Um, with this large uh, list of antibody candidates, we usually start with some affinity uh, screening. So for a soluble protein targets, we can use Katara SPR study to check how well the proteins or the antibodies bind to the protein targets um, on the trip. And also if it's a, a other targets, for example, it's a cell receptor, we can use full binding assay to check how well the antibodies can bind to the cells that are overexpressing our protein targets. So after narrowing down our antibody candidates to a smaller list, we can then do some functional studies. Um, so depending, depending on what kind of targets we work on. So the downstream functional assays could be immune cell assays, uh, virus-based assays, or it's in vivo studies if the antibody looks really promising. <clears throat> okay, so now I'd like to move to case study number one, uh, which is to discover and characterize uh, SARS-CoV-2 antibi uh, SARS antibodies with broad neutralizing activities. So this is the project we had started to work on when um, COVID first started. And then we have still been working on this project to come up, come up with new antibody candidates that can neutralize the um, fast evolving um, uh, COVID variants. So uh, these are two libraries uh, we use for both case study number one as well case study number two. Um, so the, the names of the two libraries are VHH Shuffle and VHH Shuffle HI. Um, so both libraries are actually for single domain antibodies. Um, they were all designed to have humanized uh, framework sequence as well as llama CDR sequences, except for library number two, we actually put in human CDR sequences to add more diversity and to, to be more, uh, to make it more different from uh, library number one. So when COVID first started, uh, we took a quick action and we panned um, these two libraries against the soluble S1 protein. Um, so as a matter of fact, um, TWIST DNA synthesis team and high IG were able to help us to make more than 200 antibody candidates uh, within 20 business days, which actually enabled us to very quickly test this antibody with our uh, affinity screening. So the data shown here is the Katara uh, SPR kinetic study, which I mentioned before. Uh, very excitingly, we were actually able to get a panel of uh, very strong S1 binders with nanomotor to picomotor uh, affinity uh, from our penny. Uh, so we, we've actually done some uh, additional uh, verification of this uh, VHH antibody candidates, and then we've narrowed down the, the, the list to a smaller amount of uh, antibody candidates. So then we've been work we worked with our collaborator at Integrated Biotherapeutics and test if the antibody can neutralize virus. So showing on the left 
is a data from a PRNT study, uh, which is to show that some of our antibody leads actually had great neutralization activity against the live virus. Um, so the ones with green arrow are actually single domain antibodies. Uh, the one on the uh, right of the figure is actually IgG antibody we put out from another campaign, which also showed pretty good uh, neutralization against live virus. So on the right, uh, you can see uh, we put together the, uh, the pseudovirus and live virus neutralization uh, assay side by side, and you can see a great concordance between the two different type of assays. So this data overall is to show that our antibody uh, candidates can neutralize both pseudoviruses as well as live viruses with pretty good, great potency. So moving on, uh, we decided to test uh, some of our, our antibody candidates with the in vivo study. So um, the, the uh, in vivo study model we use here is a uh, serine hamster model. So basically, uh, we treat the serine hamster with cyclophosphamide uh, so that, that the hamster become weak and immunosuppressed um, and more suspect, suspect, susceptible for COVID uh, infection. Um, so the symptoms associated with the COVID infection of the hamster in, uh, include a significant weight loss uh, nasal and lung pathology, as well as mortality in some of them. Um, so in this experiment, we've actually tested uh, prophylactic and therapeutic function of our antibody lead. So showing on the very left um, with the figure green highlighted is actually the prophylactic, prophylactic study um, where the, um, the hamster were treated with our, our antibody 12 hours prior to COVID virus uh, infection. Uh, showing on the left, the two uh, VHHFC antibody actually show pretty great protection um, of the hamster against the COVID infection. While the IgG lead did not protect the hamster from losing weight at lower doses, but it does, it did show some great protection uh, at higher doses, which I didn't put data here uh, for the sake of the limited space. Uh, for the therapeutic model, which are showing on the, uh, on the in the pink area, uh, we've actually um, those, the hamster with our, with our antibody uh, 6 to 72 hours uh, after uh, the hamster were infected with COVID. Uh, and we do see some strong protection, uh, especially on day five to day eight um, after the infection. And showing down at the uh, right bottom, uh, we can see that the, the protection, the protective, the protective from the antibody uh, can not only reverse the body weight loss of the hamster, but also reduce the viral load uh, within the hamster. Um, so the label data is very exciting. Uh, besides, we also did some mapping study in collaboration with the uh, uh, Coronavirus Immunotherapy Consortium in San Diego, uh, where they have done very thorough uh, cryo em study to, to actually demonstrate that our top lead antibody, uh, TB22-3, actually bind on the side of the spike protein in the RBD domain. Um, actually, that region um, is not a highly mutating region across all the variants of concerns. Uh, where we do see a lot of mutation on the head of the spike protein, where it's more directly interacted with ACE2 protein. So because, probably because our antibody lead bind to a relatively conserved uh, domain of the S1 protein, it actually had a broad neutralization activity against all the variants of concerns back then, um, as data showing in the um, bottom left. However, everything was before uh, Delta and Epsilon com, uh, showed up. So when Delta showed up, it actually came with this unique mutation, l uh, 452R, which actually located on the side of the spike protein. So this mutation actually almost killed the activity of our antibody lead completely. Uh, so at the moment, basically, we, we get a really good antibody that can broadly neutralize all the variant of concerns at the moment. However, Delta showed up and almost killed our antibody. So we didn't give up uh, in order to quickly come up with new antibody candidates that can neutralize uh, the new variants, we've actually went back um, to start from the panning uh, campaign using a uh, S1 protein that actually has the L452R mutation. So actually we were able to pull some additional leads that can bind to S1 with a new mutation. So the curve actually showing in the middle is our antibody candidates TB339-31 with a much stronger bonding affinity against the Delta S1 versus the older antibody candidates, TB2-3, which has much weaker 
affinity binding to uh, delta S1. So uh, while working on this, um, Omicron showed up. Uh, so we tested our new antibody lead uh, or candidate against Omicron S1 and didn't see a great binding uh, showing on the shown by the uh, SPR data. But when we test the older uh, antibody candidate TB22-3, we found that this antibody actually binds very, very well to Omicron uh, S1. Uh, we've also do did some comparative study to see um, where the like where the two antibodies bind to on S1 protein. We've actually found out that uh, the overall epitope of these two antibody binding to S1 protein is quite distinct. Um, and therefore, we, de we decided to um, build a, a new molecule, which is like a bispecific antibody. Showing on the top left corner is the structure of the bispecific antibody we came up with. Um, we basically put the VH domain of these two antibody candidates on both sides of the uh, FC constellation of a heavy chain VH sequence. And then with this bispecific molecule, uh, it actually binds very well to both uh, Delta and Omicron S1 proteins. So more excitingly, showing, uh, showing uh, in the um, bottom right corner, uh, we've actually seen that uh, this bicycle molecule, this bispecific molecule can neutralize uh, live viruses uh, for both ancestral strain, Delta strain, as well as Omicron strain. Um, in addition, uh, because this bispecific molecule actually have four paratopes versus a single domain antibody have only two paratopes. We've actually seen a strong avidity effect from this new bispecific molecule. So um, this is all the data I want to show you uh, for case study number one, where we are constantly fighting against SARS-CoV-2. SARS um, now I would like to move forward and uh, talk about case study number two. Um, and share with you some recent progresses where we are discovering antibody candidates on an immune oncology target, which is DKK1, short for Dickoff protein 1. So, wind signaling pathway is one of the key cascades regulating development and stemness. Uh, it is also known to be tightly associated with cancers. So, the wind signaling pathway could be activated by wind protein. Uh, binding to its receptor LRP protein as well as the freeze off protein on the cell surface. So, this will lead to increase of intracellular beta catenin uh, uh, level. So, beta catenin is a protein can bind to the TCF LEF transcription factor, which can then activate the gene expression um, downstream. So, DKK1 is an endogenous protein that can inhibit wind signaling by disrupting the interaction between wind protein and its cell surface receptors. Um, so DKK1 is also known to be overexpressed uh, in many cancer microenvironments. Actually, there are some efforts uh, on developing DKK1 antibodies uh, for cancer therapy. For example, Leap Therapeutics came up with this uh, DKK1 antibody named DKN1. Uh, they were actually showing some promising results. Uh, for example, for some gastric cancer patients during clinical trial two with high tumoral DKK1 level, co-treatment of DKK1 and an anti-PD1 antibody could actually extend the progression-free survival of our patients. So our goal here is to develop new DKK1 antibodies to help fill in this DKK1 antibody therapeutic field more. Uh, so following the same workflow as I've shown for COVID antibody development, we have to use the same two libraries and pan them against soluble DKK1 protein instead of S1 protein. As a result, we were able to get more than 100 uh, candidates reformatted and produced by Hatter IG. So the data shown here is actually a Katara SPR kinetic study uh, from which we were able to identify some nanomolar or even sub-nanomolar binder uh, of DKK1. So because DKK1 is, known, is a known wind signaling uh, inhibitor protein, uh, we've actually developed this high throughput wind signaling assay uh, by putting a luciferase expressing gene uh, at the downstream of the TCF LEF transcription factor. So we can measure the transcription level or wind signaling activation um, by luminescence signal. 
So we've also included DKN1 as a control antibody in this study and normalized the wind signaling activating activity of our antibody candidates to the control antibody. So shown on the right uh, is actually a plot of the transcription uh, activation activity versus DKK1 binding affinity of our antibodies. So fairly interestingly, some of the antibody candidates show very high signaling activation level, doesn't bind to DKK1 very tightly, uh, which are on the top of this plot. Uh, likewise, on the right, on the very right of the plot, you can see some very strong or tight DK1 binder um, antibody binding antibodies cannot actually activate wind signaling uh, very efficiently. So we actually pick some medium and high affinity antibodies uh, binding to DKK1 and move forward to test them with the immune uh, cell assay. Um, so the, the immune cell I see here, uh, we actually use the PBMC cell or peripheral um, blood um, mononuclear cell if you prefer. Um, so by testing the uh, cytokines released from immune cells, uh, we can char characterize how active the immune cells are. Um, as the data showing on the, on the right, uh, we will actually identify four antibody candidates from our campaign that can activate immune cells to the similar level or even stronger level compared to the control antibody DKN1. So moving forward, we're also interested to see if the activated immune cells can actually kill tumor cells upon treatment with our antibody candidates. So here we chose to use PC3 cell, which is a prostate cancer cell line, and we treat them with the PBMC cells uh, with the stimulators, uh, wind protein, as well as DKK1 and our, our antibody candidates. So following six days of cold culture, uh, we removed the dead cells as well as the immune cells by thorn washing. And then we use a luciferate uh, luminance as to measure the ATP level from the, uh, the resi residual amount of live tumor cells. And then we use the ATP level to reflect uh, the viable tumor cell count in the plate. So data showing in the middle, uh, suggesting that uh, three out of the four antibody candidates that we discovered actually showing stronger tumor cell cleaning activity in our assay compared with a control antibody. Well, there's another uh, antibody candidates we discovered did not quite kill the tumor cells. And we circle back to look at how these antibodies behave in, during the binding, binding assay and the signaling assay. Very interesting, we actually seen that the three strong tumor cell cleaning antibodies did not bind to DKK1 super tightly, or they, they also did not activate when signaling very efficiently. On the contrary, the non-tumor cell cleaning antibody candidate actually bind to DKK1 much more tightly and also have stronger wind signal activating uh, function. Um, so this is a quite interesting observation considering that DKK1 is actually one of the downstream genes of the TCF-LEF uh, signaling pathway. So we're actually working on some following up studies to demonstrate the mechanism of action of our, of our antibodies and doing some more studies to verify the tumor cleaning effect of our antibody candidates. All right, so here are all the data I want to show you uh, in today's case study. Um, I, will, I also want to bring up that um, this is only two of the many cases we've been working with high through IgG. Um, I really appreciate the strong support from high through IgG and of course, um, uh, Twist DNA synthesis team which really enable us to quickly test uh, our antibodies as well as come up with the uh, a great antibody candidates, especially during uh, our, our fight with COVID. Um, so last but not least, um, behind all the exciting work, there's a great team that I'm very proud of being part of. Uh, so on the very left is a picture of our um, team lead, Dr. Aaron Suttle, who is also the CSO of the Bioscience, as Bernie mentioned before, uh, Aaron actually has a lot of webinar as well as conference presentations talking about our library of libraries and how we can use those tools to help you develop antibodies faster and easier. So if you're interested, please check them out or reach out to us for any specific questions. Uh, showing on the top right corner is our Twist Biopharma team in front of our headquarter building, which is located in the South San Francisco city in the state of California. And uh, showing down here, the picture is actually more recently uh, taken outside of our current building um, with our Lama friends. Our current site is actually only five minutes walking distance from the headquarter. Um, yep, so with that, uh, 
thank you for your attention and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Baron and Zhen Han. We're now going to dive into some of the questions that have come in. Remember, you can add your questions in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen, and we will try to get to as many as possible. So the first question would be, are you able to purify other immunoglobulin classes like IgM or IgE? Um. Let me take this, um, Jay. So thanks for asking the question. And uh, we would be able to take on pretty much um, all um, uh, frameworks and subclasses. However, at the moment, the um, expression vectors that we are offering that make it much easier for you to order that already carry the frameworks um, of the um, FC regions um, are available for the human IgG1, IgG2, and IgG3. So if you have the need for other frameworks, there's the two ways you can go about it. Either you can custom onboard your vector with us this ca that carries this framework, or you can simply um, order this entire framework as a clonal gene, and we would clone it into that expression vector. I hope this answers the question. Thank you. Um, question number two, um, has TWIST developed its own algorithm to optimize antibody uh, expression for mm. the antibody expression? So, so this question um, um, is mainly about the codon optimization of the underlying uh, DNA sequences coding for the antibody. And yes, so when you upload any sequence, we will first of all automatically screen the sequence for synthesizability. And if you'd like, you can codon optimize the sequence for in using the codon table for um, for human expression for the HEC293 cells. And um, if there's any issues with the, ex uh, the uh, synthesizability, you can also use this codon optimization algorithm to um, replace codons um, with uh, their synonymous codons to make these sequences more synthesizable. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, we still have roughly around, yeah, uh, more than 10 questions. So next question would be, will we be getting DNA sequences along with purified antibodies? Mm. Okay, as, as I think I mentioned on one slide, so the deliverable is not only the IgG, but you will also get the DNA coding for the heavy ant light chain. And as we are delivering the IgGs on dry eyes, it makes so much sense to deliver this um, coding DNA already transformed in E. coli as uh, glycerol stocks. Thank you. Next question. Would you please comment quickly on what Twist library or libraries is? Hmm. This is probably a, a question best asked and answered by uh, Zen. Yeah, uh, I can answer this question. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, so the reason we call them library of libraries is because we have so many different libraries and the libraries themselves form a library. That's why we call it library of libraries. So as I mentioned during the presentation as well a little bit, so we, we have actually currently have um, 18 different libraries that are, that are readily ready for customers uh, projects. We can pull them out really fast from Tracer and then um, pan them against the different targets uh, and generate antibodies from there. Um, and we're actually still working on making more libraries um, tailored for specific targets um, to make the panning more efficient to help, um, to help everyone get more antibody leads from the panning campaign. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. Um, yeah. The next question, what type of biopanning approaches is twist using? Okay, I can take this one as well. So uh, our panning strategy is very flexible. We have multiple options for different type of targets. Uh, we can pan the library against uh, a 
for example, a cell receptor. So we can do uh, cell panning. We can use a cell line that already expressing a particular protein receptor and then uh, panel the library against the cells. Alternatively, if your target is a recombinant protein, we can use, uh, for example, bead-based uh, uh, enrichment or um, pull-down-based uh, uh, panning campaign. Um, yeah, so really flexible. We can also do not only recombinant protein, but also peptide. So if you're looking, you're, you're interested in looking at a specific domain of the protein, uh, we can also um, pan a specific domain of the motif of the protein against our library. Thank you. Um, next question. Uh, what are the minimum and maximum order numbers for high throughput IgG? Do you deliver the purified antibodies in tubes or in plates? Oh, so these are the two good questions because this was not covered in uh, the seminar given. So, um, of course, the high throughput IgG expression service is a high throughput service. And that means we would be very unlikely to cater to projects where you'd only want to have one or two IgGs. So the um, minimum order rules are actually for the one milliliter format to have 24 IgGs ordered and for the eight milliliter that would be eight IgGs as a minimum order intake. And we are flexible about the deliverable. Uh, you can um, opt for either a tube delivery or um, a rate a 96 well plate delivery. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, Bernd. Um, next question. Other than measuring purity and yield, what other downstream analyses of these antibodies do you offer? Mm. Also a good question. So the, the QC steps I have talked about are our default QCs. Should you have any additional requests for additional QC, we can also accommodate that by offering a, a couple of more QC assays. We can do either SEC HPLC. We can also um, um, assess the melting temperature by uncle. And we can also do an endotoxin representative sampling. And yeah, let us know if you have these special requests. There's also specific price tags attached to all of them. OK, thank you. Um, so other than purifying out of HEC 293, can you use other cell lines such as CHO? Um, of course, uh, people are asking about uh, expression in CHO. And this is something that um, the team is currently working on in the background. and. Uh, give it a couple of months or maybe a quarter or two, and we will also add this option to our uh, service portfolio. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay, thank you. Um, next question. Will TWIST be able to offer in vitro and in vivo functional assays as an extension to the high throughput IgG service? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also a good question. And yes, we are pretty flexible with all such requests you're asking. And for example, what we can also offer is downstream analysis. Uh, for example, we can do a high throughput SPR analysis downstream to do affinity assessment. And if you like, we can also uh, do antibody binning assays for you. Uh, sounds good. Thank you. Um, next question. Uh, can twist purify FC fusion proteins? Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, yeah, as, as I mentioned, uh, besides full uh, IgGs, what we can also offer is the VHH FC fusion format. And that's even available as a just standard uh, uh, order and the, which you can order through our e-commerce system. Okay, thank you. Next question. Any plan to further develop the SARS-CoV-2 by specifics? That's a question for uh, Jen again. Yep. Um, yep. So short answer is yes, definitely. Um, as I mentioned before, this is a, um, this is a project we started when, when COVID started, and we will keep going on to come up with a new antibody beads against the new variants. Um, 
So we've actually got some pretty promising um, antibody candidates against the most recent variants. Uh, we're doing some further of our uh, uh, validation of the of the candidate antibodies actually, and uh, we will keep keep working on um, and keep um, uh, fight against COVID basically. Yep. Thank you, thank you, Zen. Uh, the next question is also related to the SARS-CoV-2 antibody. Why do you build a tetravalent bispecific SARS-CoV-2? Have you tested a bivalent bispecific? Hmm. That's, that's a good question. Um, uh, I think we build up a tetravalent because it first, first of all, it will create a, like dual specificity against targets. As you can see with the bispecific molecule, we've actually make our antibody candidates more uh, broadly neutralizing uh, different variants of concerns. And also it actually uh, provides antibody with some avidity effects because we, you have more paratopes on the antibody uh, rather than a uh, monospecific or like a regular IgG or, 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 um, uh, or bispecific antibody with a bivalent uh, structure. Um, so it actually, I, which I, I didn't talk about too much of using uh, the advantage of using VHE just single domain uh, antibody uh, to as a, a therapeutic uh, development. Uh, actually, with this format, it's much more easier to develop a bispecific antibody because you're we're only using one plasmid for transfection uh, versus if you're using uh, a typical IgG format to develop a specific antibody. Um, the downstream purification process might be more complicated. Um, so that's why we're actually doing a lot of panning using our single domain antibody library. Um, so this is our kind of to-go um, uh, pattern right now. When we have a good antibody candidate uh, with strong uh, strong uh, activity, or we, we want to target a two molecules at two domains at the same time, we typically will go this way to, de to develop our specific antibodies. For this case in particular, I don't think we have uh, UA bivalent uh, by specific antibody yet. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Uh, last two questions. Um, have you measured the immunogenicity and developability of your DKK1 candidates? Uh, so for DKK1 candidates, we haven't do thorough analysis to look at the developability of the antibody candidates uh, because we're still working on uh, getting more antibodies um, and test their activity. So when we have the really nice, uh, really high affinity lead, we will move forward to do a larger scale production as well as more developability studies. Um, at, at so one thing I didn't mention during this presentation, besides using this library to get uh, DKK1 antibodies, we're, all, we're also using other tools to help us uh, get DKK1 antibodies. That will include machine learning or AI-based technologies. Uh, and actually, from those technology or pipelines, we will we also generate uh, hundreds of antibody candidates, which are also uh, expressed by high throughput IgG in a very short period of time. Uh, so when we further narrow down the antibody lead, um, we will definitely do some more in-depth developability or immunogenicity studies. Sounds good. Uh, I think we'll just uh, have time for the last question. Does Twist raise its own llama? <laughs> no, we didn't raise our own llama. We, we're, we actually have a, a good friend, uh, they actually have a farm uh, that they raise the llama. Uh, we, we, we stay very close contact with them uh, and we visit their farm uh, before. And then the, the, like what's shown on the picture was actually they were very nice to bring the llama to our side so we can uh, hang out with the llama, which is very fun experience. That, that is really a nice uh, uh, yeah, company activity to do, I can imagine. Uh, so with that, thank you. Right, that brings us to the end of our webinar. And I'd like to thank all of you for joining us today. We hope that you have enjoyed this TWIST webinar, and we really appreciate your time completing a short feedback form about the event. Your feedback is important to us so that we can improve future TWIST Bioscience events. Please click the feedback link that will be appearing on your screen to access the form. If you would like more information about how TWIST products can help you in your research. 
please visit www.twistbioscience.com. So thank you again and enjoy the rest of your day.